Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we have a fantastic video for you. It is the long, 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 long awaited Vantor of Dreams. Never mind the fact that they're already home, but they needed to get the Vantor out of the way because I, I don't know, it's just weird to me. Anyway, Vantor, who wants to see it? Let's carry on. Before we do though, a couple of things to note. £100,000 luxury 8 berth Vantor and this got quite a few people's backs up in the comments so you know rightly so I guess it says it's £100,000 who needs a bragger nobody likes a bragger do they really so this person said, I don't think it was necessary to include the price tag in the title because that just stinks of bragging, or just stinks entirely. Chris replied, it's called marketing. People are naturally more interested when they know the price. Simple, indeed. Why do you need to put the price in case others are interested? And Chris says, it's called marketing. And then this person said, love you guys, really, but do you need to say how much the van was? And Chris had this classic reply. It's marketing. This video is meant to attract as many potential viewers as possible, as all YouTube videos are. It's nothing to do with bragging or anything else. It's just clever marketing. It's also the cost, so it's a good thing to share. It's clever marketing, everybody. Who knew? Clever marketing. Not just marketing, but clever marketing, okay? <laughs> if Chris is anything, he is a clever marketer. But it's also the cost, so it's a good thing to share. The problem is, Chris, it's not even the cost, is it? You've put, it's 100 Okay, but you omitted to mention it actually cost 93,000. So when you say it's clever marketing, but it's also lying, it's not really the truth entirely. But you know, where's seven grand here and there? What's that? You know, it's just nothing, is it? The other thing you've put is that it's a luxury eight berth van, which is a little bit dubious here and there because on the description the original description of the vehicle it says it's a seven or eight berth van with seven seat belts in total now i don't quite understand the complexities of this i mean is it seven or eight and if it is indeed an eight berth why there are only seven seat belts installed originally anyway? Maybe it's intended to have an eighth one. Now, Chris, are you using it as eight? You don't don't have eight kids, so do you? Eight <laughs> don't have eight kids, eight people in the family. I don't know. Anyway, there's just a point of note because it leads us on to the next point that we're going to do. I'm just a little disclaimer. I intend showing a lot of this van tour, not because it was highly interesting, but just some of you might be interested in where things are and what, you know, just basically interested in it. And I'd rather you watched it here than go over and watch it over there. So, you know, hands up, that's what I'm doing. But before we get on to that, I want to point out one specific bit in case you don't get any further, you know, and this is important. So it surrounds the seat belts, and this is what they had to say about the seat belts. That little cutesy dinette. This is probably one of the most used spaces in the van because this is where Mila sleeps. We'll show you that a little bit later. Ignore that black mark on my hand, no idea what that is. And this is also where the girls sit when we travel. So I think Isabel has this seat here and then Esme and Isla both sit there. There's been a few questions saying, why don't you have your children with seatbelts on? We do, the seatbelts are here. We just, when we're parked up somewhere, we put them behind because they're annoying, like sticking in your back. Um, all they do is pull through. Um, and then they're exactly the same 
as in any van the thing is there and they just work exactly the same as a normal a normal seat belt who would have thunk it a seat belt works the same as a normal seat belt <laughs> what the hell anyway my point is this they posted this or rather isabel posted this on her instagram <laughs> As you can see, Isabel is not wearing a seatbelt at this particular time. In fact, on eight separate occasions within that one short clip, she was not wearing a seatbelt. So eight separate days. And, you know, so it's not a one-off occasion. It's a regular occurrence. You can see the van is moving at quite a pace. She's sat there at, or leaning over the window and put her head out the window and just in case we were in any doubt that her head is fully out of the window at any point this was also posted so as you can see you've got isabel her head is fully out the window it is driving and it seems to be taken the picture has been taken from the driver's side so i'm not sure is it chris who is filming whilst driving or how else is it done i don't know if anybody knows let me know in the comments below is there a camera that they can i i don't know that that does this that it's not chris that's filming it or is it another wind that it just seems a little bit off to me but either way this is Isabel sticking her head out the window and it is not a it's not going to be a pretty sight right because <laughs> there's a number of things that can actually happen but before that the IFAM were absolute gems in their in their defense of of Isabel being so stupid somebody replied to this initially and said take it the van doesn't have seat belts and obviously they were being sarcastic about it and uh, somebody replied i thought the same and somebody else said it's very ir irresponsible of the parents to allow the children to hang out the window and not be wearing seat belts they could be killed and yes they could be but the IFAM, who are largely made up of kids and vulnerable adults and if they're not either of those two categories then they should be highly ashamed of themselves but this is one reason why kids sorry if this is going to offend anybody but kids really shouldn't be on the internet talking about adult things <laughs> i'm sorry maybe there are some more mature ones around but you know responses such as this she's probably only hanging out the window just to take this quick video honestly you people think you know everything about this family just from a short video and then rolling eyes emojis <laughs> i mean right <laughs> i i can't express just how stupid that actually makes somebody sound because even if it's just for a few quick seconds, right? How long? Anybody want to wager a guess just how long it takes for somebody to die? What if they get hit by something out, out the window? Is, does anybody you know? No, I don't know the actual answer to that. But, you know, I'm thinking seconds, you know, if you're not, <laughs> if you're not paying attention, you know, you hit a telephone pole anything and um yeah it's um it's not gonna be pretty is it and just to prove my point and um you know don't you see don't just take my word for things because i could just be making shit up can i really but when you look at these examples here in march a new york 
train conductor was injured by an object while looking out a train window. There's the Oregon man who lost an arm when the car he was in sideswiped a tractor trailer. A British man last year died after sustaining a head injury he received after sticking his head out of a train window. And a passenger in Georgia lost his head when the vehicle's driver swerved and came up against a telephone pole wire. Then there's the story of a five-year-old boy in Rockland, Maine, who looped a jump rope around his wrist and trailed the end out of an open window. A passing car caught the tail end of the jump rope and separated the boy from his hand. You see where these incidents, you know, none of these people would have thought, oh yeah, this is going to happen to me, or, you know, it's just a few seconds, just want to stick my head out of a train window for a few seconds, just to see how it feels. And oh, that, you know, these people found out how it feels after they died. Well, some of them died. Some of them had life-altering injuries, but, you know, that's, you know, you can't, you can't say whether you're going to have one or the other. So, what if you're not hit by something? What if you're one of the lucky few that don't get hit by something and you don't die, you don't get life-altering injuries, but you're still not in a seatbelt. And um, Chrissy boy swerves and uh, crashes or, you know, somebody crashes into him. You know, it's not always Chrissy's fault. No, no, it's never Chrissy's fault, in fact, is it? No. But what if that happens and you're not seatbelted? Like most victims, Julie knew her killer. It was her son, who wasn't wearing his seatbelt. After crushing her to death, he sat back down. Think about wearing a seatbelt. So yeah, Isabel, you still may not even die not wearing a seatbelt, but your brothers and sisters... You know, Mila, Jace, Isla, Esme, even your mum and dad, they may not be so lucky. You, you could go flying through the air. Isabel, just from one side of the van to the other. And you, you, you may just suffer minor injuries, right? Your little baby sister, however... Not so lucky. She may be seat belted. She may even have the most safe baby seat, car seat, child seat in the world. We know how your mum and dad like to be safe with their char- their car seats and everything. But you, on the other hand, fuck that up by uh, not wearing a seatbelt yourself and you go flying through, smash your baby and she's dead. Sorry, I mean that's as blunt as I can put it and um, it's the actual truth. You know, people may not like me to say, oh yeah, me on my dice, but that's the sad truth of what actually could happen, not me scaremongering or anything like that, but it is the, the way... It works when people don't seatbelt, you know, as shown by that last clip. Obviously, Chris, the safe driver that he is, it wouldn't be at fault for this. It might be somebody, you know, knocking into the back of him. Mind you, your big truck truck of a van, you might think that you're perfectly safe. It's like an armoured vehicle, probably. Maybe that's one of the... um, the renovations that is made on the thing. Anyway, anybody else want now to to watch this van tour of dreams? It was um, legendary indeed. Sarah was the star of the show despite 
promising us that she was going to fuck off for the day, but she, yeah, she had to hang around. So, um, she is the talent after all, obviously. So today we thought we'd do the much requested van tour. Why am I so excited something, about that? Something we've left right to the end of the trip uh, to do. We did that. We do that every time. I I will say now. I, f I don't feel. Like, I feel like this fan tour is going to be good and interesting for a lot of people. I don't think it's going to be quite like a Mercedes Sprinter van tour where you've got limited space and all the hints and tricks and nooks and crannies where you hide everything. That's really cool and really interesting. This van's a lot bigger than the Sprinter, and we've not had to really adapt that many things we have adapted and modified a few bits but we haven't had to like you know we really had to think didn't we about the sprinter with the, as, as a family of seven to fit in it and get all of our clothes in and enough for a long trip and we had like loads of cool things that chris had done to it and we haven't had to do that much work really on this van have we we are gonna go on <laughs> After this trip, because like, I want to do this and I want to do that, mm. and don't you think this would be cool? And I'm just like, you do what you want, love. That's the thing, though, is that do what you with, want. <laughs> with any fan, it's like why the sprinter. The sprinter started off basic, and then the next trip in Ireland, it developed a lot. It's a bit better. And then in and the, then, the summer trip, yeah, it was mega. It was like and we in had, the winter trip, it was boss. Yeah, we had some really cool features. So every time you go in it, you live in it, you learn what you need to do to it, and we've learned a lot over the summer of things that we need to change about this for definite. Hopefully. And when we get home, yeah, got well, I haven't. <laughs> well, roof aircon. Oh nice. yeah, aircot, proper aircot. Oh, I won't be going on another trip into Europe in summertime without proper. I mean, I'm saying proper aircon. We, I, I feel like I need to just say again that we didn't leave for this trip thinking, oh, we haven't really got aircon, but we'll be fine. We have proper aircon. We, we do have aircon. This van comes with aircon built in, but it's just not good enough for the temperatures that we've experienced. We also came with a portable aircon machine that we'll show you in a second that didn't work great and so we bought another one which was quite expensive and even that didn't work it's not that we came ill-equipped I mean, it, it does work it's just that number one the temperatures were too much to I'll, I'll explain about that later chris can explain it's, that it's, it's electrically complicated it's to do with bands being off grid blah 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 yeah. so I'll, I'll explain that in a minute chris will explain not in a minute uh, you know <laughs> chris will explain those later but yeah there are a few so we definitely want ceiling air cons now i will start this tour off by showing you the ceiling here in the living area so we've got three well we've got well they're all quite big actually aren't they this one up here is massive um as loving the return of the brothel lights chris as you can see we will be replacing these what these call like fascias type thing no, they're, they're, these are fine. I've got all these bits. They're not what? broken. They're, they're out. They're out, but yeah, but they've they've popped they're off like they're this bit, trip. Yeah, basically they're clipping and out, and they've yeah. they're kind of a couple of them are a bit loose. So I just took them all out. Yeah, because they kept falling out. off. The lights, if you see, look. Yeah, because the lights. Yeah, there we go. The light up on a night. Though. Yeah, that one's still standing. <laughs> that's the last one that's still in. <laughs> that's still standing. Anyway, we've got this one here. We've got another one down here, and another one all the way down there so we're not losing much light space so if we take one, out the middle this one, one will get replaced and then a, a roof mounted air conditioner will be there yeah a like roof a 12 volt one yeah for we're also going to need one in our bedroom right at the back down there when i say when i say there's a lot to change interiorly living wise there's not a lot to change what there is a lot to change with is things like electrical stuff like the air conditioners a much bigger battery bank for like being off grid longer, just a couple of things. I'll explain them later though. Nothing major like inside no. to live in. Maybe we'll update, like maybe we'll change some decor of some sort in here to make it yeah. a bit different for next time, I don't know. But I actually, the mm. one thing that sold this van to us was the decor mm. inside. Because most vans this size generally have dark interior. Quite dark woody interior. Quite yeah. dark, like mahogany type dark wood. And the seating areas are usually not quite suitable for larger families and um, sometimes it's upholster is that the word <laughs> yes yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's you know sometimes they're just like one little two-seater and then a tv over this side or something like that and i love 
that this living space is not just absolutely massive and fits all seven of us comfortably on this like big u-shaped sofa but it's also leather so it's super easy to wipe clean if anything gets spilt by the little ones which has happened quite a few times on this trip a few things we did add to the van before we came away was these blackout curtains this van did come with white ones but chris wanted to buy these gray ones because they're blackout so obviously these protect people from looking in when it's dark outside and we have the lights on and it also protects the light from coming in so for us on a morning time or should i say the children on a morning time i'm blasting in through this window here this bed up here is esme's and isla's and they also have their own little curtains which they mainly leave open don't they yeah most most of the time they leave those open but there's sometimes if they're like playing their games and they want a bit of privacy that they'll close those over so isla sleeps here and then esme sleeps on that side down there this is a really good size double bed actually it's massive. um they've got a few little trinkets and things up there i don't know if you can see in the corner but at the side of the fan and her plant they've got a tv which is just a freestanding tv so sometimes if they want to watch a movie together that doesn't involve the whole family esme will move her pillow to the side of isla's <laughs> up there and they can both lay comfortably and watch a movie they've also both what an amazing way to destroy their eyes you need to move that thing a little bit further away from them i'm afraid <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> oh dear me they have some mentalists aren't they i've got a window which they absolutely love especially when it was warm if they open both it creates like a breeze going through and they love that and then they've also got their own little roof window up there as well really cute little living space Another thing we changed when we bought this van in this living space here is the TV. It did have a smaller TV on this mount here. And we just changed this, where was this from? Is it from the Caravan or something, the Sprinter. Yeah. So we got the one out of the Sprinter and popped it there. This has been a really, really nice, cozy space to watch movies, which we've done quite a bit on this trip. One thing that Chris also updated in the living space but also throughout the whole van it was the lighting chris is very particular <laughs> about his lighting it can't be white it can't be yellow it has to be just right so we changed the fascia lightings the fascia um what is it called the fascias on these lights here there's one there one there and one all the way down there and these were really old yellowy looking things they were just bulb lights they weren't leds yeah they were just bulb LEDs. lights um, and they are really, really bright lights and they, they're really nice. They're really awesome on a night time. Um, Chris also put in, put in these LED colour changing lights the whole way around the van. They don't just go around the living space. They also go around the kitchen, the dinette, which is just a little bit further down there. And we've also got them in our bedroom as well. So, oh no, what's going on there? Yeah, it's oh, it's the kitchen ones. Those are attached to the kitchen ones. But um, we usually have them on purple and they just feel so cozy on a night time. And even when you're outside the van, so if we're all sat like outside with the awning and thing, awning out and things, just looking at the van, it just looks so inviting. Like you want to get in the van, don't you? And just feel nice. It's probably one of my favorite things you actually did. Yeah, it's cool the lights and when you were saying like i'm gonna put led light i was thinking oh my gosh such a waste of money uh don't actually talk about lights and wasting money because if anybody remembers in the sprinter van chris wanted to spend a stupid amount of money in my opinion on a light mirror for the sprinter uh -huh. what was it how much was that less than 100 oh wow so it's like a, a mirror that he put in the sprinter van and he spent so much, he spent, it was less than 100 but it was still expensive. Um, and I remember going mad, I was like, I can't believe he spent, I just put the light on and I get a 5 99 mirror from Home Bargains. And he was like, no, this one's cool because this one lights up. I'm like, so what, we've got lights in the ceiling? Anyway, I did like the mirror in the sprinter van. Didn't that mirror get smashed? 
I'm sure it had a crack in it at least. Maybe anybody else has, uh, can remember because I, I have recollections of it having a crack in it at some point. But I can't say I was best impressed when I came to this trip, went into the bathroom and noticed another one just casually placed on the wall. And I know it didn't come from the Sprinter van because that one went with the Sprinter van. So yeah, anyway, we'll get to the bathroom in a second. Bloody hell, sir. I, did, I really didn't realise that that was going to be part of this tour. <laughs> you and you in the bathroom. Bloody hell. The image. The image. Seriously. It's, it's, it's going to be haunting me all day. Um, what else can I show in here? We did add a few things like this. Little bookshelves. These are great. There's so many different books all behind here. Mila and Jace like to pick out the book. To read on an evening we did get these <laughs> spice jars as well but it's just been so hot and sometimes sticky in the van there's no point storing them in there i'm sure we should have filled these with sand from like places we went oh yeah that's a good idea actually you know instead of it being like a spice thing we should yeah. have filmed them with sand or something anyway they'll be there for another trip these cupboards here one two three a food <laughs> nothing really exciting in those it's all just like cereals and food and things like that and then we've got four cupboards on this side one two three are the girls personal belongings so they've each got a cupboard with the personal things inside and also one packing cube with so many outfits they each squeeze in a different amount like between like five and seven outfits they're in a packing cube on one sh between five and seven outfits aren't you like on holiday for like three months or something don't you need a little bit more clothes than that or is that just enough is it you know turn them inside out and all that you know just to keep it going shelf and then on the other shelf they've got just their personal belongings that they kind of want immediately in the van they do also have more storage for clothes and personal things in the garage at the back of the van which we'll get to in a little bit this last cupboard on this side is the junk cupboard. <laughs> so yeah. It's, it's not that bad really, it's just got books and boxes. We've got some games and some books. We've got a few bits from Esme's birthday up there. Well at least Esme's birthday presents are within reaching distance for her, but um the same cannot be said for poor little Mila who has to well go go searching in the garage of doom over there in the van we've got the new tablet box that we had to buy after we got burgled you got burgled you say please do tell us more what exactly did you get burgled sarah apart from the phone there's nothing else that was taken, was there? As far as I'm aware, you had an intruder, allegedly. But um, I don't think you lost anything of any value. Just the phone, apparently. Um, conveniently, obviously, because <laughs> was there possibly something on that phone that Chris didn't want you to know? And he kind of made up this intruder story. Because don't forget, Sarah, you were asleep. How do you know this actually happened? <laughs> uh, trusting Chris, that's legendary. <laughs> Bubble machines, torches, just random bits. And then one, two, three is food. And then in this last one here, it's kind of like a media cupboard. It's a little control center for, uh, we've got a satellite dish on the roof that pops up on like a, an arm, like a robot arm thing. And then it picks up satellite TV wherever we are in the world. So, and that the satellite TV is rigged up to all the TVs in the van. So Esme and Isla's this living room one, and the TV that's in our bedroom as well. Yeah. At the back, they're all rigged up to. And the then there's box. some gaming things of Isabel's because she has the Xbox set up here. I say Isabel's. It's not just Isabel's. Everyone gets to use it, but it's Isabel's mainly. Isabel mainly plays on that. So she's got some other gaming bits in there. And they're as just well. all our remote controls for everything in there as well. Yeah. And then we have the kitchen area. This is such a nice space. And um, we did have to make a couple of adaptive adaptions, adaption, add-ons, uh, mainly for surface space, which I'll show you in a second. But it's a really, really nice, bright, a 
airy kitchen. So one thing that I do love about the kitchen in this van is the storage space. There's so much space that we've even managed to add a few little bits like an ice machine that can be easily stored away and not left out and the ice machine has been absolutely fantastic this trip definitely recommend those um random bits in some of the cupboards we've got like shelf knives cheese cutters lots of kitchen utensil bits in those top ones in the drawers we've just got um cutlery and things like that and then we've got two boxes in the cupboards down here that hold um plates not very neatly i've got to say <laughs> but plates bowls cups flasks and things for jason Miller as well there's a few control panels and things up here which chris can go through uh, in a little bit he's probably best to explain those we've got a great sized sink and then over here we've got a full oven which is blooming awesome we keep pans in the drawer here at the oven we've got a grill and then obviously a gas hob as well um it's really cool i will admit though i do prefer to cook outside we'll show you the outdoor kitchen that chris kind of built in in a little bit and i don't think i think on this trip how many times have we cooked in this van maybe twice. maybe like three or four times maybe like three or four times and all the other times has been outside because i do much prefer it but as far as vans and van kitchens go this is a really good one it's got the extractor fan um and just basically everything you could possibly need in a kitchen also has more storage space up there it has a microwave we've got the toaster and the kettle set up on here and um, we've got the freezer here and a really good sized fridge here oh the fridge the fridge is one of those things that we've debated whether we need to change or not we have had a few issues basically it's not it doesn't work as efficiently as we need it to basically we bought a temperature gauge whilst we were here because i was like this fridge just doesn't feel that cold like it is cold but we've basically not trusted meat or dairy products or even milk we don't even store milk in there now do we no. what is in here let me see okay so we've got drinks butter fruit and sauces and some chocolate in the bottom as well um and sauces and jam so that's what we're keeping in the fridge and that's pretty much all we're keeping in the fridge in the freezer we're keeping milk guys now there has been a few times we've got up and it's been completely frozen but most of the time the freezer just keeps it really 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 cold um, not actually frozen which we're not quite sure <laughs> not we don't really understand why we've also got a fridge from the sprinter van in the back and that's where we keep meat there because that is a really cold fridge and it works really really well just coming back down here because it's a bit lighter i can't reach <laughs> the van's like four meters high i cannot reach the roof the roofs in this van to open the blinds to get more light down there so um yeah the fridge and fr the fridge freezer i'm not sure if it's just those style fridges are not quite efficient when you're in super high temperatures or if ours is just broke so and we need to buy a new one so we're not too sure we might look into that though when we get back home definitely we're gonna replace it 100 we're gonna oh okay. I don't trust it anymore. It's going. there we go we don't trust it we only trust it for drinks we've had ice lollies and ice pops and things and they just they just stay cold for like three weeks and then one day they'll suddenly just freeze over and it's like whoa what's happened to the freezer why is everything frozen but then it'll go another three weeks and it'll just not not freeze anything again so it's not consistent you know it's just not consistent so this little bad boy here i think i've shown this before i actually showed this i think before we came away this is actually a chopping board from ikea and <laughs> chris so i thought you was mad when you bought this i was like what planet are you on are you joking but this has been a godsend especially when we're making like i say we chris is making cups of tea on a night time or on a morning uh, he's always the one that does the cups of tea and things it's a chopping board that as you can see just falls flat against the unit but when you need extra workspace ka-ching 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 there we go it's on these little levers and it gives you that extra side space that this kitchen is desperately missing you can obviously put cups on there 
or up there as well but when you've got a big family or when on the cases that we have been cooking in the van it's good to like put plates and things on here we've also made sandwiches on here and yeah but it's not used as a chopping board it is a sandwich no. so if anyone puts a knife on oh no I was, I was got a knife i was like cutting a sandwich or something chris was like what the heck are you doing like, what? It's not a chopping board on this side. This is not a chopping board. Put, put this thing on a plate. <laughs> well, it is a chopping board. No, it's not. I've not installed it as a chopping board. Of course, it's a chopping board. It's an IKEA chopping board. No, it's not. We're not ruining it. Might it might be a cheese board. You know, it might not be a chopping board. I think it's a cheese board. Is it? I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure it's a chopping board. I think it's a chopping board. But it looks cool anyway. It might, just, it might just be a side implement. I don't know. But it's cool. I like it anyway. Either way, it was made up ready. You know, it's like it's not like a bit of wood. It's it was made up ready. It's the perfect size as well. Look how cool it fits. The daily dramas in the Ingham house all day. Eh? Is it a chopping board? Is it not a chopping board? Is it a cheese board even? Who knows? The drama just never ends. Perfect. And if you hold that a minute, babe. All you have to do is press the levers there and there. Ching. And it goes back down. Actually, someone asked me um, when I showed them before, and I'm not sure, I can't remember if I did it or not, for the link to those, because they wanted to add one, they couldn't find the, oh. they couldn't find the lever. I'll, I'll do a little affiliate section for this, for this video, a van affiliate yeah. section. So if anybody's interested in anything that we show in this video, video, <laughs> then check out the description box down below. There'll be some links to everything that um, Chris thinks that you guys might be interested in. Okay, mm -hmm. let's move on to the dinette. And this is the, uh, oops, Chris giving me daggers because um <laughs> dropped that a bit too hard <laughs> on his wood. Um, I'll show you this setup for night time. Um, tonight, we're gonna do like a, a night feature as well. So you guys can see what the van looks like during the day and during the night. But this is a really good space, a really, really good space. We can get at least, you know, well, we could, you can fit like two adults and a little one in the middle on these seats so they're a really good size and then we've got more storage space up here we've got this end one here it's got bread nappies and then tins they're half, actually half empty these aren't they yeah, we need to go shopping tomorrow. we do need to go shopping here's all the baked beans that we were talking about <laughs> talking about in yesterday's video i see what you mean sarah Branston's the only brand of baked beans that you should ever buy because of course they don't sell beans over there in such countries as Portugal and Spain and everything else you know it's almost as if they don't have their own brand of beans you know like it's an actual thing in Spain and Portugal and places like that where they actually have proper beans and not just beans in sauce Anybody else been to Spain and experienced the same thing? Um, yeah, maybe more than... Oh, there's not about 12 cans in there. Anyway, um, pasta, spare water bottle. We've got loads of tuna. Is the tuna still going to be okay to eat? Probably, yeah. It's usually kept on a shelf. Yeah. It's usually kept on a shelf, but not in 40 degree heat for seven weeks like we've had. Mm. I don't know if to risk eating the tuna or not. Comment down below. Obviously, it wasn't always 40 degrees in the van, but there were times when it got up to that. There was a lot of times it was like that. So, <laughs> does that mean the tuna will now be gone off? Because we've not eaten it. I've got, like, tuna pasta and all sorts of meals that I don't dare make because I'm... Oh, Sarah, all those planned meals. Tuna pasta and tuna bake and uh, tuna... What else can you make with tuna? So many meals gone to waste, isn't it? You'll have to come up with a new meal plan now, won't you? I'm worried that the tuna's gone off and I'm going to give everyone food poisoning. So comment down below, is this still okay to eat or am I best throwing it? So there are the cupboards up here. Ice lollies and things from home that we can't use or eat because the freezer just doesn't seem to freeze them. But yeah, these are pretty much empty right now. Okay, moving a little bit further up the van, we have the shower. Pop the lights on, babe, please. There we go. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I don't like Chris's modified 
I don't like Chris's modified shower head. Power shower head, lovely. It's good. It works well. It's got good power when you're in there. I don't like it's that black. it's black though. <laughs> I just don't like it. I think a little bit too much information there, sir. It's got good power. <laughs> that shower head. <laughs> They're in the shower. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Anyway, back. Back with us. Are we back? <sighs> got all hot and flushy there for a second. Chris absolutely loves it. I don't. Not really much to show in here, to be honest. It's just a shower, guys. <laughs> it's got the door that you pull over. Um, it's a good size, works well, does the job. It's a door here for privacy, so whoever's in the shower, they've not only got like the shower door, which is obviously glass. Um, there's this here as well, that they can just pop over, so they've got privacy when they shower. Turn the light off for that. There we go. And then this side we have la toilette and the expensive mirror. That's a waste of blooming money. Um, well, yeah, don't forget to macerate a <laughs> toilet, Doctor. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, we've got great lights that Chris upgraded in here. So, I mean, look. Do, do you necessarily need the mirror? You don't need it, but it looks good. No, you don't. You can't even sit. I can't sit on the toilet and do my makeup in it. <laughs> Sarah, I'm so glad you ended that sentence with do my makeup because I really thought you were about to say something else. But sitting on the toilet there and... Um, watching yourself oh my word <laughs> yeah why do you need it <laughs> why would you why do you need a, a a mirror whilst you're sat on the toilet just saying chris what have you got planned because <laughs> look how high he's put it no it needs to be that high doesn't need to be that high high for you yeah no one else can see themselves in it <laughs> So space is a little bit tight in here because we've got this new air conditioning unit. You can, everyone can obviously fit in here and use a toilet. Hate this. It's like 1960s. No offence to anyone that's got like fluffy things on the top of the toilet. I think it's vile. Come now, Sarah. It just completes the whole brothel vibe, doesn't it? You've got the 1960s fluffy carpeted toilet seat. You've got the, um, the neon... LED light mirror and add that to the the whole pink purple effects lights in the caravan. It's just one of those um, Playboy buses, right? No, I love it, man. Chris loves it. My, no, I'm sorry, toilet. that's not for me. <laughs> I do like this bathroom. We've got the sink area here, which oh my gosh, you have to clean out daily with everyone's woman toothpaste spit it's disgusting but um <laughs> the amount of times say, who's just used the sink for toothpaste go and wash it out is vile we've got loads of storage in here so we've got storage down here and then we've also got some storage up here okay toiletry bags makeup bags um little ones toothpaste after sun sun creams liquid talc lip balms um, and then mine as well as toilet bags in there's well. so there's also some clips toilet roll random bits get my trones, that intro, yeah I'm gonna show you trones we got some trones <laughs> these these are the big these are the junk pile of the bathroom the junk room they are literally full of junk so toiletry bags again we've got loads of hair products hair bands hair clips bobbles um, Brushes. We've also got some medicines down in here that Chris takes and a few aspirin and things like that that I take and then we've got another Trone up here. I can't show you what's in there because I can't reach <laughs> I can't reach up there. It's too high up, but it's basically makeup bags And there's also some dry shampoo in there that I brought away like as a necessity I was like I definitely need dry shampoo. I'm, I'm definitely need it Not even been up there once and used it not used dry shampoo. I brought three bottles as well thinking I'd need it. Think I'm gonna be so hot, my hair's just gonna be disgusting. I'll need it for like oomph. I'll need it for like, you know, that bit of volume. No, my hair's not been down whole trip, so I've not needed it at all. <laughs> so they're all still up there. But yeah, that's the bathroom. The light's nice. I'm not gonna, it's, 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 a, it's a nice light. Is it needed? No. Was it it's worth the money? Me. No, it was not. Give him a break, Sarah. He had the best intentions, okay? 
he knows what he wants and he knows who he wants in there and uh, yeah you just have to go with it and then finally right at the back of the van we've got la bedroom jace is up here just chilling bless him <laughs> um we did start off this trip with a nice big juicy duvet it's nothing like a big juicy duvet to um you know <laughs> i i have to ask you this question sarah okay now i know that your kids kind of mimic the things that you say and do and things like that so your kids have also by you know on occasion have in fact said things are juicy when they're not juicy right but when you are homeschooling them right do you in actual fact correct them when they say oh that look at that tree it's juicy or look at that inanimate object it's juicy and things like that right there's a juicy book and things like you you get the picture do you in fact correct them and say no it's not juicy that's a cor the incorrect term to use for an inanimate object can't be juicy do you say that to them or do you in fact say yeah it is so juicy isn't it that book and you know I, yeah on this bed not it's not been on the bed once has it babe nope, that got booted <laughs> right out i've got my pregnancy pillow up there um we've got a big roof window pop our lights on our main ones just for a sec thank you we've got loads of spotlights up here and um, this is actually an extra wedge that the family before us had made for this space it's actually not meant to be here it's just meant to be like two single beds but they co-slept with their baby and we thought rather than take it out it just makes like this big massive giant bed like it's bigger than super king i bought a super king duvet did i buy a super king duvet babe i can't remember now if it was king or super king either way i think it was super king was it super king i can't remember whichever size it was don't fit it like only covers half the bed so that's how big this bed space is and i thought we might as well just leave it in because number one it makes a nicer bigger bed and number two when this baby's born i'm currently pregnant with what an odd turn of phrase that is this baby that i'm currently pregnant with it's like you expect many more pregnancies at all sarah <laughs> currently pregnant with it when we come on trips, we'll be co-sleeping, probably, most likely. That brings me to an interesting question, Sarah. I mean, it's almost as if what you can't cope with having the bed to yourself or you and Chris again, because as soon as one baby stops co-sleeping with you, you get another baby. You did it with Jace, he co-slept. When he was ready to move on, you got another baby, Mila. She's been co-sleeping. She's ready to move on. And now you can have another baby. So when are you ever going to not be co-sleeping with a baby and just have you and Chris all loved up again? So it makes sense to just keep that in here. I did a couple of bookshelves here. Um, and Mila's babies, which she's been playing with, but her babies usually go down there. Her iPad's there right now. We've got another window here, which gets open the second I open my eyes in the morning to let air through. <laughs> we tend to leave the roof one open, but when you open that one as well, it lets like a nice draft through and it's really nice. I kind of wish there was one on your side as well. Chris always says, I wish there was a window on my side as well. Might, that might, we might do that. We yeah, we might put a window also on Chris's side here. Right now we've just got our Sprinter van, a picture up on the wall, and then we've got a DVD player, a white noise machine, and a smart TV up there as well. Um, what else have we got up here? Two thrones. We've got the two white ones here and here. This one houses all of Chris's clothes. This one houses Mila and Jace's packing cubes so all of Mila and Jace's clothes are in there and then this middle section here houses mainly my clothes but also um swimwear so swimwear and things 
are also in that. That's really buggy me that it's upside down. There we go. <laughs> but yeah, it's I love this space up here. It's so nice and so so cozy. Um but it does have a door if you want to get changed up here or I don't know, whatever. Um and also I really like Hi. looking for what I really love is laying up here in bed like on an evening time reading my book or something and then just looking all the way down the van and being able to see Jace and the girls just chilling in their own spaces it's just so cozy and so nice okay we're going to complete this video well we're actually going to complete it tomorrow morning by showing you the front of the van the inside the cockpit um, but we're going to continue this video in a couple of hours when it gets a bit to pick up when it gets a bit darker to show you our night and just like that we are all ready for bed the dinette transforms into a massive double which Mila has full reign of and absolutely loves and then down here we've got Isabel and Jace and then massive double it's not a double it's a super king or more even super king a super king bottom sheet doesn't fit this it's too small so it's huge this absolutely huge and then up top we got Esme and Nyla Hi. in their gorgeous double up there Best. very very nice Best indeed the whole house. <laughs> so that is how we go from day into night all right let's have a bit of a geek out so this van has 400 amp hours of AGM batteries underneath which power everything in the rear alongside a 2000 watt Victron inverter and also a three kilowatt generator, petrol generator, which is basically the same setup as we had in the Sprinter van. We had 400 amp hours in there and also a two kilowatt inverter, which we changed to a three kilowatt for the, for the winter trip. But um, it's pretty much the same setup as we had in the Sprinter. This van does not have solar at all at the minute. So, and we don't, we don't really need it. I am gonna add it for, for our next trip for Defina, just because I think that it'll be a, ma a massive with the right solar panels it'll benefit the van massively charge wise because we like to be off grid as much as possible when you're off grid for a number of days and you have the inverter running all of your 240 volt sockets inside the van the batteries drain fast especially when there's seven people in here and everyone's trying to charge their phones their ipads macbooks whatever it might be and we're running an air conditioner as well so having solar added to this will help especially in the sunny countries in the summer with charging them back up whilst we're using them but in this van we don't really need it because we have a three kilowatt generator in here a three kilowatt petrol generator which with a full tank will run for 48 hours before it needs refueling again so it's got a massive fuel tank and it's really good so when the batteries run low from us using the inverter a lot we can just turn the generator on and the generator powers a fast charger for the batteries which then charges the batteries back up fast so it's really good like the system that's built into here is really good for that all i'm hearing chris is you know the the snoopy yeah that one
Holy Christ, that was some speech, Chris. I hope the geeks amongst everybody in the audience here loved exactly what you (laughs) were talking about. Maybe you skipped to the end and um, didn't hear a word he said. Or maybe you just listened and you still didn't hear a word he said. But anyway, until next time, this has been brilliant. Have an amazing rest of the day comment down in the comments below if you have reached the end of this (laughs) thank you so much (laughs) but let me know you've reached the end by commenting the word seatbelt you're probably going to comment that anyway aren't you but seatbelt is the word of the day until next time have a brilliant day thumbs up from me comment all your thoughts down below subscribe to the channel if you're new And I'll see you again soon in another brilliant video. Take care of yourselves and bye-bye.